Hi, my name is Martin Gorner. Most of you know me from the TensorFlow Without a PhD series. I would like to thank you for the incredible following there. In the kind comments I have received, many people said the talks helped them understand machine learning and inspired them to study it, and that they would like to see more talks like that. Me too, actually. So today I decided to do something a little different and share my little speaker secrets with you. Hopefully, I will inspire you to share your knowledge too. Yes, there is a secret. Its name is, is storytelling, and it is not necessarily what most people think. Let's start storytelling for tech audiences with wolves, aliens, and a monk. And we start from here. A little sketch should help you picture the situation, a projector, slides, bullet points, and an audience that is not very engaged. You have been told, use storytelling. But you just want to put these three points across, not write a novel. And what is storytelling anyway? Yes, what is it? Let's have a look. Is it about creating drama with plot twists and tragic consequences, Shakespeare style? Hmm, maybe, but I am not certain that I have Shakespeare's skills. I could not do that. Is it about stage presence and charisma? Hmm, this one has been tried before and did not work so well. More seriously, I have heard presentations from people who are not expert presenters, and I was glued to my seat. There must be something else. Maybe character design. Again, why not? But it's not the main thing. Now, we are on to something. This is the core of storytelling. The wolf. Little Red Riding Hood was walking through the forest happily singing along when, suddenly, appeared the Big Bad Wolf and, and we have a story. That is Storytelling 101, the most basic narrative. A happy situation, a problem, and the story is the resolution. Now let's go deeper. And to make the point, let me tell you a story. This is Giordano Bruno. He was a monk in Italy in the 16th century, and he is credited with being the first man to understand that the stars, those small specks of light on the celestial sphere and the sun, the mighty sun, were the same thing. He was the first to understand that the sun was a star. That was certainly not the understanding at the time. People thought that the celestial sphere was an actual star-dotted shape that surrounded the Earth. But why was suggesting a new arrangement of things so revo uh, revolutionary? Let's unwind the consequences. If we take off from our planet and head for the stars, and if those stars are other suns, we can expect their surroundings to be similar to ours there will probably have be planets around them, new worlds, some potentially inhabited by different intelligent creatures. It is the plurality of worlds. That is the story. And then there are million storytelling techniques that you can use to drive this story home in more engaging ways. How did the story end? Well, recognized for his genius, Giordano Bruno was acclaimed by his peers, went on to become a renowned scholar, had many disciples, and is remembered as the first scientific hero. All that thanks to the power of storytelling. Well, no, unfortunately, his personal story did not end that well. What I want you to remember is this. In every story, there is the message, the story, and storytelling techniques. Those are three different things. There is the point you are trying to make, the story you use to explain your logic, and then storytelling techniques that can be used to entertain the audience along the way. The decor, the characters, the plot, and so on. But those are a second priority, at least when addressing a second audience. The story itself is not. Let us use a couple of examples. This is Brian Kentrell talking about containers on bare metal at a Velocity conference. He is actually funny, full of energy, bounces on stage. But that is not why I think that this talk is great. He explains why having a CPU with a virtualization hypervisor and a virtual machine with an operating system on top, then containers and possibly another flavor of the OS on the container is madness. And more importantly, he tells the story or of how this madness came about. 
through a long series of design decisions that all made sense at their time in their context. You walk out of this talk with a fairly good understanding of the challenges of virtualization and, incidentally, an understanding of why his company does it right. And this is Princess Mononoke, one of the greatest animation films created by Japanese director Hayao Miyazaki. It's beautiful, the animation is spectacular, and it has a great story. Dame Bashi is the leader of a village. She is a modern leader. She empowers women, shelters the rejected, and does many other things right, and she is successful. People work hard, follow her lead enthusiastically, and her village innovates and thrives in prosperity and happiness. But as the village develops, it encroaches on the surrounding forest, and she finds herself at odds and at war with the wild princess of the forest, Mononoke Hime. Imagine a war story with no good guys or bad guys. It's a great story. And there is also a clear message from the director about the environment and the encroachment of civilization. So we have a great tech talk and a great animation movie. And the three ingredients of storytelling are there. The message, the story, and the storytelling techniques. But in a different order of priority. When you are directing a movie, first you must, you must entertain your audience. You will use all the techniques are at your disposal, the visuals, the music, the characters, plot twists, and all the rest. You also need a good scenario. Moviegoers will not sit there watching explosions and car chases without an engaging story behind them. Well, sometimes they will, but it's, it's not a great movie then. And, and finally, your great movie becomes a classic if it also conveys a message. It is more than entertainment. That is the cherry on the cake. For the tech talk, the three ingredients are in the reverse order. Your primary goal is to communicate some technical information to your audience, the message. However, they will not necessarily understand it, or accept it at face value, or, or work through all of its implications for their work, not by themselves. You need to weave a story through all these parts of your message. And finally, if you can be entertaining on, st on stage, that's good. But it's the cherry on the cake. I want you to focus on the cake first. So back to where we started. Bullet points. A presentation coach told you could, uh, to get rid of them, but you rejected his advice because you knew your new product has three new key features. And well, the best way to convey that is with feature one, feature two, feature three. Bullet points, right? Wrong. What is missing? There is a core piece of information that is missing from this slide. What is it? The wolf! Yes, the wolf, of course. You forgot to explain why you need these features, what problem they are solving. Tell a story with wolves, aliens, or whatever other beasts your customers may be facing to help them understand why these features exist and how they will solve their problems. This is Adam Burke. A couple of years ago, I used to run a startup workshop at Google called Launchpads. They still exist. And Adam was the best lean startup coach I had the privilege of working with. He had one question for the startups printed on his t-shirt. What problem are you solving? And he was relentless in asking it. How do you know people have this problem? Did you ask them? How many of them? What did they tell you exactly? Did you ask how much they would pay to solve the problem? And so on. This is how you build product market fit. It's a long process, and it's hard to get right. And once you believe you have a good product, you need to tell the story of your product market fit to your audience. They are not listening to you to hear about your product. They want to hear about their problems and how they will go away. Product market fit is a critical piece of information that is best conveyed with a story. Why? Let me show you the information density of stories. What is this? OK, a house and a girl. Now, what is the name of the girl? Of course, you have no way to tell. Let me help you by adding a couple more strokes to this sketch. And now? When I do this storytelling workshop with live audiences, there is always someone who finds it, Heidi. Yes, this is Heidi with her grandfather in the Alps. Isn't that fantastic? An impossible question, a couple of additional brush strokes, and boom, 
your brain retrieves the relevant information from the common stories we share our cultural background. Even sketched with very broad strokes, a story can provide perspective where you can understand the problem and see how the solution fits into the big picture. And now you understand why this product or feature is going to make your life easier. The story that replaced the bullet points is there not for entertainment, but to convey a critical piece of information in a way that makes most sense to our brains. In this case, product market fit. Okay, so now you have a big bad wolf on your slides and your audience is still sleeping. Why is that? Well, ask yourself, do you care about this story? And again, I'm not asking this because I want to say that passionate speakers are more fun to watch. They are, but there is something more important. If you feel passionate about a topic, you will spend a lot of time either studying it or researching it or trying it out and accumulating experience. Without even thinking about it, you are passionate. And by doing this, you accumulate great material to tell your story. It is again about conveying information. Your passion makes you a sponge for information that you will, that you will then weave your story with. Uh, experiences, setbacks, workarounds, and so on. If the audience is still sleeping after that, maybe ask yourself, do they care? Is your wolf really big and bad for this audience? Are you talking about the problem they actually have? And we are back again to product market fit, away from storytelling techniques and back to using stories to convey critical information. Let's try a couple of examples to see this in practice. First, we can have a look at my own TensorFlow without a PhD video. I wanted to teach people how to build a neural network and convey some of the techniques and know-how that engineers apply in the field. This could have been a list of bullet points. You, you have to know about this and this and this. Instead, I take one neural network model and tell the story of its development from the simplest possible model all the way to the final high-performance version. It's a very simple problem-solution, problem-solution narrative. This is not a novel. The story does not have to be complicated. What took me a lot of time, actually, here, was not the story structure, but rather coming up with uh, the, the neural networks that fail in spectacular ways so that I could talk about how to fix them. Let's build this very simple neural network. Mm, OK, not bad for a first try. But why is the output so noisy? It must be something with uh, the learning rate. Oh, yes, that was it. More layers now. Oh, no, we have overfitting. You usually solve that with dropout. Let's try. Mm, rats, it didn't work. What now? And so on and so on. Problem, solution, problem, solution. Telling it as a story allows me to convey additional information. Not just the technique, but how do you identify the problem? What metrics should you monitor? What can you see in those curves? And once you have spotted the wolf and applied the cure, how do you know the technique worked? Know-how, experience, is notoriously hard to codify into bullet points. A story here is the best way to convey it. Let's look at the second example. In this presentation, my colleague Tyler Akidao talks about Google Dataflow the latest version of our MapReduce style data stream processing technology. This had the potential for being the typical boring sales pitch. The state of the art is features A, B, and C, but our product, mm, drum roll, wait for it, also has features D, E, and F. No amount of drum roll could have saved, saved this. Instead, Tyler decided to tell the story of those features. He talks about the pioneering projects in the field, MapReduce, Hadoop, Spark, Dataflow, the advances they made, the roadblocks they bumped against as the technological field was shifting around them. He tells us how and why engineers designed modern data stream processing systems the way they are. The narrative structure is, again, a very simple problem-solution sequence, but it allows Tyler to convey the incredible depth of experience he has in this field. As the story unfolds, his understanding becomes your understanding. 
and you suddenly know what those features are and why you need them. Finally, here are examples of narrative structures we have seen today and that I have seen elsewhere. Making your point through a story will make it more engaging. People will remember it, remember it better. But that is a secondary goal. Use stories to convey critical information. The last example in this list illustrates it again. A colleague from mine needed to put the results of an experiment on a slide. Easy enough, bullets, numbers. But that would not have been very convincing if you do not know how these numbers were measured. So he told the story of the experiment, and suddenly the audience knew about the experimental setup and could judge for themselves. The experimental setup is actually a critical piece of information in any experiment. You can describe that too with a story. Thank you for your attention. If you liked this video and found the approach useful, I invite you to use it in your own presentations and share the results in the comments below. Please share your stories, narratives, and tell me if they were successful in adding context and information to your message. And if not, feel free to share any other story storyteller tips and tricks you might have. Have a nice day.